Right, well, back to Fogress over here to review the very first Raw of the brand split. It is the 25th of March 2002. And we are kicking off with the draft. We've got Finney Mac on SmackDown. We've got Rick on Raw. And let's dive into the bloody greatest episode of Raw ever, brother. Let's get Raw. So, so day intro. going forward, we will be doing the reviews. Reviewing Raw, reviewing SmackDown. Top five moments for Raw. Top five moments for SmackDown. So if you enjoyed the Ruthless Aggression era, then fucking get tucked in. Get your seatbelt on. Because we're going... What a ride. And oh, uh, ride. this show was a, a very good ride that I enjoyed. So we'll, we'll, we'll go through it. we start off with Linda McMahon. The uh, WWFE CEO. I don't know what the hell that's all about. Perhaps they were, I don't know, in dispute with the WWF at the moment. And they had to just add an E onto it. I don't know what that is. Or why she was called the WWFE. But she kicks off the show announcing tonight that we'll have a draft. That Mr. McMahon will be drafting for SmackDown. Ric Flair will be drafting for Raw. Uh, McMahon will be going first. The first 10 picks from each brand will be made tonight. And then after the show, there will be a lottery to decide everyone else. I mean, Linda McMahon normally bores the tits off me. But I thought she did alright in this opening segment. It was alright. It got the it job done. It's pretty decent heat. We'll give it a wee 70 rating. Aye. Anyway, up next we had... Uh, Taz versus Mr. Perfect. It was a weird match to kick off a draft. Right. It's like, it's a draft. You want to see who the first pick's going to be. You don't want to see a match, let's be real. You don't. Especially a, a match featuring Taz and Mr. Perfect. Thankfully though, it didn't end up, it ended pretty quickly. With Taz. Taz uh, taps at Mr. Perfect and then Taz tells him, it looks like the perfect pick has become just another victim. Uh, Mr. Perfect was talking up his chances of winning this match and being picked number one. I mean, I don't even think he'd be picked in the top 100, but Mr. Perfect thinks he's going to be number one. Well, spoiler alert, he wasn't number one. We then go backstage to Ric Flair and Mr. McMahon preparing for the draft, and they're in the war rooms. Um, Ric Flair is with Arn Anderson, Mr. McMahon is sitting on his own. And then, speaking of Mr. Man, he comes out next to make his first draft pick. The Rock. Which was fantastic. What a pick for Finney Mac. Out comes The Rock, and I love this segment. This was... I mean, uh, The Rock would have had to go SmackDown. I mean, the name's SmackDown after him, so I guess. And for all the slack that we gave Rock in 2001, I'd say right now he's probably back to his best. Yeah, I'd say 2002 Rock's been definitely better than 2001. Comes out. McMahon's laying down the law saying there's going to be no uh, catchphrases, no laying your hands on me, none of this you, you know your role or none of this, it, you'll never say it doesn't matter again because it does matter Rock and then The Rock goes on to bury McMahon and he gets the crowd to start a you are an asshole chant, the, the, le the left hand side of the arena's chanting you are and then the uh, right hand are chanting an asshole. And the crowd <laughs> was absolutely electric. And this went on throughout the night, this was fucking great. So, uh, yeah, I mean, great stuff. Can't complain about it. Out comes Ric Flair, though, to make his number one draft pick, and he picks The Undertaker. Which, why did Taker... Taker then has the iconic reaction here of, like, what the fuck's Ric Flair doing? But then on SmackDown, the previous one, he, d he told him to draft him. I don't know, maybe it was reverse psychology. End of the day, Taker was pissed. Uh, he was not happy. And speaking of not happy... We have uh, Kurt Angle confronting Mr. McMahon. Um, Kurt Angle's like, he can't believe what just happened. And Vince is like, I know. He's, he's, Ric Flair stole the Undertaker from me. Um, and Kurt Angle's like, no, you didn't pick me first. Uh, well, Kurt, yeah. Kurt Angle's taking a fit over McMahon not picking him first. And then the Undertaker comes in. He's pissed off with McMahon. Taker says McMahon promised him that Ric Flair wouldn't pick the Undertaker. And Undertaker says McMahon owes him one and that he hopes he's a man of his word before uh, walking out. So, I mean, so, so so far we're off to a great start. Great show. I mean, I'd say apart from Taz, Mr. Perfect has been near a 10, like, to that point. M maybe I mean, bar Linda, but I think from once they, once he announces The Rock. Yeah, I mean, no, I'm, I, but even then, I mean, come on. Taz, Mr. Perfect was alright. Aye, but I wouldn't include it in a 10. 
No, I've not. Like, but just because. Well, I'm just letting you know. Doesn't mean the show can't get a ten just because Taz missed a perfect t- three minutes. Is it? No, yeah, I, I'm not saying that. Right. Anyway, up next. I no need to start greeting over it. With Edge and DDP versus Christian and Booker T, I guess this means the show isn't a ten because we've got a match. Oh, oh god. Oh. And this just shows you guys. Look at this. This is a, a mid card match, and you could even argue DDP and Christian are lower mid card. And you'll see if this match happened today, it'd be mere fan of mania. And it just shows you how strong the um the roster is here. But Booker T gets the job done on his uh, former WCW um, colleague, and the heels pick up the win. We then have Kurt Angle and McMahon backstage. Kurt Angle basically. F- forces McMahon into picking him he says no if you've got to think about this smart McMahon Flair's going to pick me because I'm an Olympic gold medalist so McMahon picks Kurt Angle he says he, says he won't pick the NWO because Ric Flair doesn't want poison but he does want Olympic gold medals yes yes that's what happened alright then you go on then alright so um, so then Mr McMahon announces the second pick is Kurt Angle oh really did I not just say that Kurt Angle freaks out hugs McMahon <laughs> Great wee segment, and then this, uh, Kurt Angle's leaving, he turns back round, and he says to McMahon, but you should have picked me first. You're goddamn right. <laughs> and then that is a funny wee segment there to end it. So, up next, Ric Flair comes out, and he decides that he his second pick is going to be the NWO, Hall, Nash, and X-Pac, being drafted as a trio the, the pick that Kurt Angle says would not happen, it's just went and happened. Mac, Mr. McMahon, at next we see him with Kurt Angle. He's furious. He, he says, Damn it, I wanted the NW. Bag off. Ric Flair stealing all his picks. He's not happy with Angle. And um, then he's on about who he's going to pick next. Uh, Mr. McMahon says he kind of wants to pick RVD. Kurt Angle's a bit surprised. McMahon says he's not a massive fan of RVD, but he wants the Intercontinental Championship for them on SmackDown. And then Kurt's like, hello. He said, I can get you the Intercontinental Championship. Just uh, put, put the match. Yeah, put, <laughs> put me in a match with RVD. Which McMahon does. And, I, I, and I'll bring home the Intercontinental Championship for SmackDown. And then Kurt Angle recommends another pick for McMahon. And that is a returning guy who will be back soon called Chris. The family killer, Benoit. Yep. So McMahon picks him. Angle leaves. McMahon's got Benoit. He's going to have the new Intercontinental Champion tonight. McMahon's like, hmm, maybe she should have been number one in regards to Kurt Angle. So another great backstage segment, which I think probably only Kurt Angle could pull off. Like The perfect goofball. I mean, how can I get be World Championship material? Gold medalist. And still pull off the goofball gimmick and actually make it great. He could have been number one, like... He, he, he could have been. He, he could have been. But talking about number two for Monday Night Raw, brother. We have the NWO, they come out and they confront Ric Flair in his war room. This just seemed a bit off to me, though. Yep. I don't know, there's just something off about it. You've got, like, six doing the talking for them. And then Ric Flair announces that they're going to get along with his next pick, and he picks Kane. But, like, yeah. Ric Flair said that as if the NWO had... Beef with Kane. Which they should have, guys, because it should have been Nash against Kane at Mania. But the NWO, at this stage, didn't even know Kane existed. Yet Ric Flair thought he was getting, like, one over on the NWO by picking Kane. So I don't, I don't really, I didn't really get that. Would have made much more sense if this was Austin. Yeah, well, he's not eligible, so. Yep, he's not eligible. When will he be picked? And he wouldn't be getting picked for, so, I mean, yeah. let's just be fucking real here. Anyway, up next with Trish Stratus versus Ivory. Don't know why this is happening. Ivory's not been seen for ages. Appeared last week and then, I don't know, jobs out to Trish in like a two minute match. I mean, all these matches tonight have been quick. It's evident that they know what's important tonight. It's the draft. So we quickly get this match over with. And then we cut to Mr. McMahon for making his way. the fourth choice. Out to the ring. No chance. Dun, 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 dun. And he picks the immortal Hulk Hogan brother. Am I bone to pick with this guy? Why is he picking Hogan fourth and Benoit third? Like, I get it, Kurt was like, Ric Flair's going to pick this big man, but you've got to pick the Hulkster over Benoit, no? Yeah, I think so, 100%. That's just... He's even doing the wee taunts. Out comes Ric Flair, though. 
and he drafts Rob Van Dam to Raw, and then that's when we have the McMahon angle hang about Rob Van Dam. We bet you were all that big ah, man. Ah, fuck. I jumped the gun. I jumped the gun. Ah, oh, damn it. But anyway. And then when you think you're done with great segments, The Rock and Hulk Hogan backstage talking about joining forces one more time as if they've did it a hundred times, even though they've only did it once before. But yeah, we're going to collide with three members of the NWO. One more time, tonight. The Rock and Hulk Hogan in action tonight against the NWO. Then we had Mr. McMahon drafting Billy and Chuck to SmackDown. So Mr. McMahon brings the Tag Team Championships to SmackDown. I think it would, actually, I think it would have been funny. Instead of him picking Kane, he could have been like, we're going to bring these guys in to sort you, Billy and Chuck. I think that would have been a really funny comedic effect. <laughs> but then I guess he's trying to scare them, so it would have been a bit stupid. I think it would have made more sense if McMahon was trying, like, doing it as a joke on them. Yeah, Some, something like that. But then we have Hogan and The Rock taking on the N W. Oh, and when four fifths of the match look done, that's uh, a bit of a problem. I mean, you can just tell Hogan here, man. You see when he was doing the run and ducking in the big boot, he just looked like a, a seventy-year-old man. Four fifths. Well, that pack looks like he's off his head. You think so? Why? But he carried the match, mate. No, yeah, I think he was good, but I think he just looked off. All right. Three, three fifths of the match are off their head. Three fifths of the match can't work, and the Rock's just none of that. Aye, so uh, yeah, the Rock Hogan versus the NWO. H- Hogan's off his head on his ego. Um, th- th- so the NWO is beginning to beat up the Rock and Hogan. Kane comes out to make the save, comes in, starts bartering the NWO. Scott Hall gets a choke slam for his worries. Uh, at the end of the, the match, Hogan celebrating with the Rock and Kane. Uh, he's celebrating as if they've won. The, uh, they announce that the winners by disqualification of the NWO, and then Hogan freaks out as if he, he can't believe what was just announced. It when was, it was very fucking, goofy, guys. When it was obvious. And I've seen Hulk Hogan do this a hundred times. Like, what is his problem? I mean, he must have knew it was a DQ thing. It's like a, it's like a cartoon character. I know that's what wrestling is. But, I mean, no, nah, but it's retarded. I mean, uh, you, I mean, what result was he expecting? What result was he expecting? I know it's a disaster. Anyway, though, McMahon comes into Fleur's war room and he wants to declare war, man. He's arguing about the draft, all these picks. You want to pick all the champions, brother? Or, oh, Kurt Angle's going to kick Rob Van Dam's ass. Then he pushes him into his seat and then Arn Anderson's like, whoa, I'm holding you back, nature boy. All right. Uh, was there any more picks at this stage? Or? Um, nope. I don't believe there was. Was there? No, I believe there was. I believe Ric Flair picks Booker T. Yep, and then McMahon picks Edge. So yep. that's seven and seven. Seven and, then... and six. Aye, seven and six. So what's the next pick then? Seven and six. Well, they go to Jeff Hardy, Billy, do they not? Well, that's all right. Then Jeff Hardy, Billy, decent enough match. Jeff Hardy picks up the win. Yep, Jeff Hardy. Quick win, another quick match. They came out in a cool attire, the Hardys and later. Yep. It's like... Then they uh, go Luminous. to they go to Ric Flair... He's backstage in his uh, war room. He says that his next pick, he's going to be getting the uh, the most dominant tag team of all time. And he's starting that with one half of the Dudley boys. He picks Bubber Ray Dudley. Then McMahon appears and says, I see what you're trying to do, Rick. And you ain't going to get the best tag team ever. Because my pick is Devon Dudley. So Dudley's have been separated. They have a wee moment. They shake the hands. Yeah, they're it's like, no, sad. Like... I, I, I get what McMahon's saying, right? I get that he's stopping Rick from getting the Dudleys, but would you really want one of the Dudleys without the other? And would you waste this sort of high pick on it? Like, I mean, it's just... I don't know. It's a bit... Yeah. But, nah, it's McMahon. He, he, he wasn't putting his ego to one side. He, he just wanted the shaft of nature, boy. And anyway, Reverend Devon's a great gimmick. McMahon knew what he was True. doing. The, the Rikisha comes out for a match. Well, yeah, Regal. But before it can happen, Brock Lesnar comes out, attacks Rikishi, big F5 on the fat ass. Uh, pretty impressive. Then we have uh, Jazz checking in from WWE New York. She says that she's going to be the only bitch on two shows. And this kind of made no sense. She's like, oh, I can't wait to get my hands on Lita and Trish. And it's like, well, hold on here. You just had a match at Mania with both of them. Oh, well, no, but I thought it was all right. Like, saying, oh, yeah, the, apart the whole... from that. I'm the only. I'm going to be the only bitch on two shows. That was a pretty good line. Jr. and King, who we haven't actually mentioned much on this show, but they're just great. Yeah, yeah, they didn't really have much standout moments. Like, well, Jr. said the last time he was involved in a draft was Vietnam. Vietnam. So, would you dodge, Jerry? 
Uh, up next with Flair McMahon. Mr. McMahon comes out and says his next pick is going to be Brock Lesnar. Flair comes out and he's like, Vince, it's not your turn. It's my turn, and man. McMahon's like, no, I know it's not my turn, but I'm going to pick Brock Lesnar. Now you get two picks. And Rick's like, nah, it doesn't work like that. You don't change the rules. And Rick picks Brock Lesnar. Who would have thunk it? So McMahon pissed. He says he's going to pick a guy with just as much potential as Brock Lesnar. And he picks Mark Henry. Imagine... Imagine thinking you were picking Lesnar, but then you end up getting Mark Henry. Such a shock. That's fucking, that's soul destroying. Um, then we go to Ric Flair. He says he's going to pick William Regal. That is Ric Flair's ninth pick. William Regal's shown in the uh, the draft room waiting. He's like, but I'm loyal to Mr. McMahon. I you kissed know? his ass. You know, so I mean, that was good. Ric Flair says to, uh, McMahon says to Flair, I see what you're doing, you want all the championships, I tell you one championship, you're not getting the hardcore championship, so McMahon picks Maven. And he stands up like Ed, fair Ed and Eddie with his mono bro. I mean, <laughs> I kind of feel like McMahon's picks are going to shit now. Yeah. I mean, they start it off strong, but, I mean, his last three picks have been Mark Hendry, well, his last four picks have been Devon, Mark Hendry. Who else? The guy you just mentioned. Maven? Maven. Did I pick someone else before that? Who else did he pick? I can't remember, but <laughs> but regardless, uh, I can't remember who it was, right? But then McMahon's like, oh, Rick, it's just down to you, your last pick. And uh, Rick picks Lita, and then Mr. McMahon's laughing about this. He finds it funny that uh, McMahon would waste his pick on a woman. Flair. Uh, yeah, McMahon finds it funny Flair would waste his last pick on a woman. And then Rick's like, I think the crowd have said it best all night, and he gets the "you are an asshole" chant going again. So, I mean, every all these wee segments were fucking great, and I think this is when the show's good. See when it's like matches that are just quick, and you, you you've got like lots of different wee backstage segments, and it's like it's switching up from one scene quickly to another. Brilliant. I mean, that's when wrestling's good. See now you put wrestling. Literally, the fucking first segment could last forty minutes, and no one wants that. And it's very slow and boring and methodical. This was like quick action. Well, one minute you're in Ric Flair's war room. Next minute you're in McMahon. Well, one minute someone's coming to the stage and you're getting a quick match. And then they're doing a backstage interview. Then someone picks somebody. And then you see the reaction of the person getting picked. It was just, you know, like back and forth, back and forth. Quickness. And, and now, now it's just shit. Then we go to Kurt Angle, Rob Van Damme. Another match that lasted like fucking two minutes max. Uh, ends on a DQ. Edge comes out. The attack angle. Then Stephanie McMahon discusses her triple threat match tonight with Michael Cole. Says she's going to become the new uh, champion, first women's champion. Then we get the triple threat match, Stephanie McMahon versus Jericho versus Triple H. Which was better than the Mania match? Ah, well, nah, maybe. I don't know. Fuck it. <laughs> I mean, the ma none of the matches in this show are great, were they? No. The NWO, Rock, well, the NWO one was probably the best. Triple H wins with Spine Buster on uh, Stephanie McMahon. Good to see Triple H get the Spine Buster over. Plus it shows you that he doesn't need to win every match by pedigree. I'm surprised there wasn't a two and a half kicker. Oh wait, it's no dynamite, big man. Uh, and then Stephanie McMahon at the end realised she's, she's lost. Security come, escort her out the ring. Crowd starts singing, na 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 na, goodbye. And that is the end of Raw. Oh, hell yeah. And then also they mentioned, like McMahon earlier did say, if you bring your Raw guys to Smackdown, they get a bit frisky, my Smackdown boys will lay the Smackdown up. So obviously you're wanting to tune in to SmackDown and that is the way the show went and I thought it was pretty great. Yeah, no, I think this is for the first Raw brand. Well, it's not. I guess it's not the first brand split show. Because it's still... Ah, yeah, it's, it's still the both shows doing it. It's just the initial draft. But in terms of a rating, I'm going to give it a 9. I'm tempted to give it a 10. Well, I'm gonna give it a ten. Well, I mean, the, the only th if I was, none of the matches were great. Yeah, it's, I was gonna say there was no Austin, which I feel was a bit of a letdown because I haven't seen Austin since Mania. But I, like the way I'm seeing it, if this Raw can't get a ten, like what what what, what would need what what would you need to do to get a ten? Do you know what I mean? Like if this can't get a ten, then well, fair enough. Then I'll give it a ten. No, you give it a nine. 
Ah, well, uh, it's overall, it's a 9.5. No, but do you not agree, Austin, not being there? The matches were a bit weak. That's like saying if Austin injured, you can never get a 10 show. <sighs> no, I just felt like if Austin... I, I just feel like if Austin was there and he got drafted, that would have been another epic moment, and I think I would have pushed it to the great beyond. But all right, then. Well, we knew Austin wasn't getting drafted, but I mean, I guess there was no reason for him not being on the show. Yeah. He could have been the draft enforcer or something, who knows. But anyway, 9.5 out of 10 for the 25th of March 2002 at the Raw. We'll be back with Let that. us know what you think down below in the comments. Did you enjoy this uh, show? What rating would you get? And yeah, the draft, I mean, probably, the, well, I'll say probably, easily the best draft in WWE history. 2004 one was good as well. I guess the 2008 one was alright. Kind of since then it's went downhill, but I mean, I think this is what they need more of. More drafts like this. This felt fucking huge. See when they did the draft in 2006, it just felt... I don't know. Poundland? Aye. I can barely even remember it. But anyway, there you go. Great show. Fantastic Raw. And it gets a 9.5 from us. Anyway, guys, till next time. Peace.